Trump has repeatedly threatened to prosecute. Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Barack Obama, Liz Cheney, Nancy Pelosi, Adam Schiff, General Mark Milley, Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg, New York AG Letitia James, and that's just some of the people he has talked about. Let's dive into this clip with CNN host Dana Bash and Jim Jordan, where things get pretty heated as they debate why Trump won the election. Dana Bash and Jim Jordan go back and forth, each bringing their own strong opinions on what really drove voters to back Trump. It's an intense exchange, and Dana and Jim don't hold back in explaining their very different takes on Trump's victory. Do you support him using the Justice Department to go after the people who disagree? He didn't do it his first term. What I support is stopping. Right, but this is a second what I, term. What I support is stopping this lawfare, stopping this political targeting political cases. We all know the Fonnie Willis case, the Alvin Bragg case, and the Jack Smith's cases were all driven by politics. The American people understood it. That's why that they had this overwhelming win. One of the reasons this overwhelming win for President Trump. So I'm against the retribute. I'm against the Justice Department saying, if you're a mom and dad showing up at a school board meeting, we're going to investigate you. I'm against the FBI putting together a memorandum at the Richmond field office, which said, if you're a pro-life Catholic, you're an extremist. So I just want to, we want all that to stop. I just want to put a button on this. So what you are saying, is that all of the times that President Trump said so many things about people that he promised that he would go after them and prosecute them, you were going to encourage him not to do that? Well, I, all I know is what he, he, he didn't do. I know, but we're he talking talked about, about lock her up. You know, he's talking about his, uh, his opponent in 2016, uh, Secretary Clinton, talked about lock her up. He didn't do that. He didn't go. But the Democrats went after him. I know, him, but I'm talking about Donald Trump's second. What they did second. If you enjoy this type of content, please like and subscribe. It really helps out. Going forward, I, I don't since think, then, I don't he has said any, many, many times. I don't times. think any of that's going to happen because we're the party who's against political prosecution. We're the party who's against going after your opponents using lawfare. In fact, I think this is one of the issues that the So it was just said. a campaign rhetoric? It wasn't real? Well, I think he's pointing out what's going on. The retribution, actually, Liz Cheney in January 6th went after President Trump, said things that weren't accurate, I think, in their report. Uh, the, the other individuals he's talked about have, have been part of this retribution going after President Trump. Never forget, it started clear back before he was in office. They spied on his campaign in 2016. I know, but I, I am not so talking about... eight years, they've been going after President he Trump. He won. He won. He sure did. He won he, big. He won. He won big. So my question and what people want to know is what he is going to do. Look, I think forward. he's going to do just for example, two days ago, he this. called for investigations yeah, into anyone do spreading this. rumors. I think he's going to secure the border. I think he's going to get rid of this crazy inflation that's hurting middle class and working class families, hurting our economy. I think he's going to get back to common sense energy policy. I think he's going to focus on protecting the First Amendment. I mean, th think about this. Did you ever think you would see Donald Trump, Elon Musk, RFK Jr. and Tulsi Gabbard on the same team? They are on the same team because people yeah. because of the attack on free speech, the attack on the First Amendment. He's going to focus on those things yeah. that the American people elected him to do. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this heated debate between Dana Bash and Jim Jordan. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. But there was there were false claims about election fraud when Donald Trump lost. This time, Donald Trump won, and you think the election was free and fair. Do you see there's a little bit of a... No, I think the Democrats got to ask, why, why did there? we go from getting 81 million to getting 70 million? What happened to those 10 million people? Maybe they need to... Maybe it's not smart to run an election where you have no vision, no record to do run you on, believe you're just that the 2024, call the other side names. Do you believe that the 2024 lawfare? election was free and fair? I do. I do. And why was it different from 2020 when he lost? Is that the only difference? No, there were concerns about 2020 with all the mail-in voting that happened. You know, what Pennsylvania had like two point something million mail-in ballots come in without any signature verification, which was required under Pennsylvania statute. So there were all kinds of concerns with how the 2020 election was okay, carried but out. There was, but there was absolutely the biggest, the biggest question Democrats no need to be asking, fraud. what happened to it the 10 through. million voters that Joe okay. Biden got that didn't come out for Kamala Harris? A bunch of them, President Trump's numbers were right up where they were in 2020, but the Democrats were much lower. I think it's because... They had no vision, no record to run on, and they just wanted to call everyone names. Turns out when you, when, turns out when you, when you, you tell people, oh, you're a fascist, racist, deplorable, garbage, they don't like that. And then when you use lawfare to go after their candidate, well, they don't like that either. Well, That's why they came out. So on top of the, the economy, on top of the price right, of gas, on top of the inflation, we're that's at why they voted for president. Here's what's happening here. We're already seeing the strategy moving forward, and it seems like it involves a lot of looking back. Dana Bash is focused on campaign rhetoric, which we all know is often just talk. 
Candidates make big promises or even threats to win votes, but most of us realize that a lot of what they say won't actually happen. It's just common sense in politics. First, it's smarter to judge leaders by their actions, not their words. Actions create real outcomes, which is what really matters. For instance, if we look at what Trump has actually done, he hasn't been someone who actively prosecutes his political opponents. But if we hold Biden and Kamala Harris to that same standard, we see a different approach where political opponents do seem to face legal battles. Second, Trump's mandate has always been clear. A stronger economy, a secured border, and a peaceful Middle East. That's why people voted for him. They felt they knew exactly what they were getting. Lastly, someone's finally mentioning something people have noticed, the huge difference in mail-in voting numbers during COVID. There's a real question here about whether election laws were followed closely enough, leading to a big surge in numbers. 